This will be a Christmas full of sad separations, but for one family, this will be their fifth Christmas they've spent apart. Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe has been detained in Iran since April 2016. Her husband Richard has campaigned tirelessly for her release, and now the couple's six-year-old daughter Gabriella has made a direct plea to Boris Johnson to help bring her mother home. It's Boris Johnson. Oh, this is Boris Johnson, OK. Dear Boris Johnson, Please can you bring my mummy home for Christmas? She has been good. We're joined now by Richard Ratcliffe and also by Alika Ashuri, whose father, a dual British-Iranian citizen, was also imprisoned by the Iranian regime in 2017. Uh, Richard has come to you first. I mean, you know, coming up to Christmas, this must be a terrible time for you because it's a time that you'll be really hoping for a family occasion and this is the fifth time you're going through it. How are you feeling today? Yeah, no, you're right. Obviously, I mean, I'm probably feeling like everyone in, across the country in, in Christmas is really disoriented and in some ways it's just a practical focus on, on what we can do on, on Friday. Uh, but, yeah, you, as you say, this is the fifth Christmas we've been apart. Um, it, it, it doesn't get easier each time. And, and certainly, as Gabriella gets bigger, she understands more. And, and this year she wanted to, to do something. So she wrote the letter to, to the Prime Minister. Um, she's been asking a lot about when Mummy will come back and, and, well, hopefully soon is the answer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just heartbreaking hearing Gabriella talk like that. You know, obviously amazing that she's she's written that letter and she wants to do that, but it must be such a hard situation. As you say, she's getting older, she realises more what's going on, she's got more questions about the situation, and it's just awful, isn't it, for her not being able to see her mummy in the way she'd want to? Yeah, I, I, I think that's right. It is tough. As she gets bigger, she questions more um and and certainly asks more about well why why has this happened to us um you know and there are no good answers to that there are no easy answers to it um and, and yeah i i think this year was harder because she also she probably understands she's got more expectations about christmas um she's been at school she's been um you know getting excited with all the other children and and you know just as, and as i said the expectations that they will have in her class are now all, all being scrambled Mm. And Alika, you've joined forces, haven't you? Because you're in a similar situation. Your dad has been imprisoned in Iran since 2017. So, you know, you, you know all too well what that is like. How, how do you manage to get through this situation with those fears? And I know for you as well, you've got particular health fears, haven't you, for your father? Uh, yes, yeah, my dad was taken um, in 2017 and we haven't spent a Christmas with him for three years now. And um, each day that uh, goes by, you know, we're more aware that, you know, he's not getting any younger and his health issues aren't going away. Uh, and it, it's really difficult. I mean, I know that there's been, you know, lockdowns and uh, tier restrictions, but um, for my family and for Richard as well, um, our loved ones have been in a constant lockdown for about three, three years and for Richard five years. And it's heartbreaking to see nothing's being done and we have to cope, um, it, you know, helplessly. And I'm very grateful that we have joined um, forces with Richard because I always believe that there's strength in numbers. And um, if we do raise this issue as, as a common problem, as a problem that needs to be uh, addressed, I think it would get more attention uh, that it deserves. Mm. And I did spend a lot of time with um, Gabriella. And it's really sad to see how much we have in common. We're, I mean, she's only six and I'm 34. But that I actually see the way she struggles to talk about her mum whenever the issue comes up. If it's subconsciously or consciously, she doesn't want to talk about it. And I find that with myself as well, because I don't really want to talk about my dad, you know, with people who are going through a difficult times with uh, corona. But, you know, you, you always have it at the back of your mind that this is something that's going on and um, you're spending yet another year with without your loved ones. And um, it, it's heartbreaking that I have so much in common with this little girl mm. in terms of our loved ones being unjustly taken hostage. 
Uh, Richard, what, uh, what are we now asking for the government to do? What are the specifics, what are the demands from, from you, really, and, I suppose, what demands are coming from uh, the Iranian government? Well, yes, it's probably not very sophisticated. It is just get them home um, and it's do what, what you need to do to get them home. Um, probably in our case, we've been pushing very hard for the British ambassador to come visit Nazanin because she's at home. She's not uh, she's at a parent's home with an ankle tag, not actually in prison at the moment. Um, and I think that's quite important because if they can visit Nazanin, they can then push to visit other prisoners who are still held inside Evan prison. Um, government's been quite reluctant to do that. So that's probably where we're pushing. And, and then beyond that, obviously, it's quite clear why Nazanin is held. It's quite clear why Anushin is held. Um, there is this dispute over money uh, and the government needs to find a way to solve it so that we can come home. And are you getting any indication that that money dispute will be settled? I mean, will it be paid or will there be a, a court case? I mean, how, are you seeing any, any way through that? No, I, I mean, I generally don't think the government's so keen to explain what it's doing um, on, on the money. Um, it keeps us well away from that. So I've had the last time I spoke to Dominic Raab, the Foreign Secretary, would have been about um, six weeks ago. Uh, and there he was quite clear to say, listen, we're working on a diplomatic push. I can't go into details, but I promise you we're trying hard. Um, and obviously, he said something similar a few months earlier. Um, it's been going a long time. I get more sceptical than, than you know, most of the, the words come back from the Foreign Office. Um, we'll see what happens. The, the next court case on the money is not until April, which is actually after the end of Nazanin's sentence. Yeah, OK. Well, and Alika, just a final thought, because I know, you know, you've got this combined effort, you've done this film together, that you've been there to Downing Street calling for them to change. You're really hoping that this push can make a difference. Uh, yes, we do. I mean, um, the Foreign Office uh, themselves, there was a parliamentary report by the FAC that is urging the Foreign Office to take uh, stronger action uh, because, you know, uh, young mothers and retiree fathers don't need to be locked up. And, you know, it boils down to the question of how much is a human's life worth to the British government for, it, for them to take it seriously, for these individuals to be reunited with their loved ones. Uh, I mean, the debt of £400 million is what Iran is asking for, and the UK doesn't even begin to acknowledge these situations as hostage takings, let alone taking steps to, uh, you know, work towards fixing or negotiating okay. anything. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there, but thank you so much. And our thoughts are with you. We know it's a very, very difficult time. Almost every day must be a difficult day for you, particularly at Christmas. Uh, please uh, give our love to uh, Gabriella as well and to both of your families. And we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Thanks for joining us. We do hope on that they're back home Britain with morning. you soon. Thanks so much. What was the last wish that you made? What was it? Well, I made a birthday wish. I made a wish for uh, uh, my dad and your mom to come back. When did you miss your dad the most? I miss my dad on my birthday. I miss him at Christmas and when I make my cakes because he's not here to see the cakes. So when do you miss your mom the most? At night. At night. Why? Because I cry about it. Oh, why do you cry? Because I want her home. Look. Same uh, reason. Same reason as me. Something for everyone. I think looking at this, I think this is Daddy. No, it's Boris Johnson. Oh, this is Boris Johnson, okay. That is Ty. Okay. 
Why is it so long? Dear Boris Johnson, please can you bring my mummy home for Christmas? She has been good. This year we've been campaigning firmly to get Nazni back for Christmas. This is now our fifth Christmas separated. That is a very long time. So we asked Mummy, what, what does she want for Christmas? She says she wants to come home. They obviously can't have that for Christmas. Why can't she have that for Christmas? Because it's there and God can't do that. But who gives the presents for Christmas? Is it God or is it? Santa. Santa. Can Santa not do that? Sure. went back to Iran to visit his mother. It's a trip he's made many times. One morning, he left the house to do some shopping. When he was in the street, a car just pulled up to him. Four men came out, asked him who he was. When he confirmed it, he was taken to prison. He had no idea what was happening to him. This has been going on now for three years. It's so horrific. There is no way you can accept that this can go on for 10 years. It, it's, um, it's a different level of suffering. Yeah. The first Christmas that he was away, I didn't put up a tree because I thought there's no way that I can actually, we can celebrate this as a family without him. And then the year after, he said, no, please do put a tree because when I'm here and I actually imagine that you've got a tree there, you've got presents and you're all together, it makes me happy, so I'm in there with you in spirit. And I'd much rather think of you all together happy than, than being miserable. His Christmas duty is um, taking photos, videos. From when we were kids, he's obsessed with filming everything and documenting everything. So um, I think where he's most missed is when we tried to take selfies at Christmas because he, he was famous for taking the worst selfies ever at the Christmas table. Every time we want to take a selfie, we, we say, oh, hopefully next year he'll be here to take the awful yeah. selfies. At Christmas, you know, you spend happy times with your family. It's such an ordinary thing that people take for granted until you can't do it. The past year has been different because, of course, Gabriella came back home, is living with me. It's good that we've got, got Gabriella back, um, certainly half a family. She's had to adjust to being back with Daddy and obviously then is, is missing Mum. I've had so many occasions where she's not been here. It would be just nice to be reunited. It's been a long journey for Gabriella, um, and coming home isn't just getting on a plane, there's the whole process of, of finding her feet back in the UK. When she went, she was one and three quarters. She'd always been promised that she was going to come back with Mummy, and that's not what happened. She came back before Mummy. That looks quite good for a kid to do. It does look quite good. She likes to take charge of everything and, and won't be pushed around. Space. You're not the bottom. She won't accept a promise, you know, deliver it now, please. Does she trust the grown-ups? I'm not sure. It's certainly, it's one of the things I worry about. Should you be in the theatre? Yeah, yeah. Why? Happy to see her. Well, happy to see mummy. What colour eyes has she got? Brown. It's a bit hard to draw her. Missing my family. That is the only thing that I can say. Yeah? Anything else? Plenty, but uh, I can't take it over the phone, so I have to wait for the right moment. Imagine if suddenly Boris Johnson or Dominic Rob were here, what would you be telling them, just briefly? Uh, I would say it was your brother. No, oh, I think they cut us off. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter, it happens. I mean, yeah. we're used to it, so... Greetings to you all, Amnesty friends. I am ringing from uh, Evin Prison. 
I would be grateful if you could tell your MPs and put pressure on them so that the government would, would take action because my fellow British friends here are suffering and they are waiting for your actions to get free and to get back to their families. Please do something before it is too late. Thank you. And please do not forget about us at Christmas time. We'll be thinking about both of you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah mummy, mummy works there. In the city. Do you know which town? You see the pointy one? It's the, it's the smaller one underneath the pointy one. So if she was working there, she could probably see us. We could wave at her. I know, but when she's back. A two generation gap between us, but we both share something that's like really profound. I can tell that it's a really hard subject for her to address. She kind of either deflects or doesn't really, she refuses to talk about it, which I think for a six-year-old, that's a very complicated, sophisticated thing to have to deal with. And um, in a way, I think it's stranger that she's experienced it more firsthand than I have. So she is a lot more experienced in it. She's gone to Evan, she's visited her mum there. And, and I think that's, for me, that will be daunting. So I don't know what it must feel like for a six-year-old to have only known her mum through that. She doesn't really like talking about where mummy is. Um, she will, you know, ask, well, do you think this person knows that mummy's in prison? She is aware of the stigma. You know, she will ask sometimes, well, you know, well, why did this happen to my mummy? Sometimes it's, well, what did mummy do? There's almost like a looking to blame mummy. Um, sometimes it's uh, it's about why is the world unfair. It is not our doing. It is not Nazneen's fault that she's in prison. It is not her family's fault that she's in prison. When she comes back, I want to cuddle her first and then go to the toy shop. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Love from Gabriella. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Mm.